Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Let us uh, now again come back to the to the very important aspect of stereochemistry that is called conformational analysis. Okay, and to know conformational analysis uh, or to do conformational analysis, the important part is that we have to be very clear about the conformations of molecules. What are conformations? And then alongside uh, the other terminologies, there are what are conformers of a molecule. Okay. Now, conformations arise due to the free rotation around bonds. When there is a free rotation around bonds, uh, bonds which are connect which are formed between two atoms which are more than which are not monovalent, which are either divalent or trivalent or tetravalent or more, then what happens if there is free rotation? then you you can arrive at different geometries of the molecule. You can arrive at different geometries of the molecule. Like I am standing here, I can because my hands are freely rotating. So, I can have different orientations, different geometries of myself, but I remain myself, but means I remain the same. If I raise the hand, that is one conformation of me. If I raise this hand, that is another conformation. I can raise both hands, that is also the conformation. So, all these are different conformations of me. So, similarly, molecules where there is this type of freeness available, then they will also rotate, they will also turn around and take different geometries, and these are what are called conformations. Only thing I wanted to point it out point out is that if you have a diatomic system, then even if you there is rotation, you do not create any, although there is rotation, but you do not create any new geometry, because it looks the same all the time. But if you have something attached now, if you have uh, a tetrahedral, tetrahedral carbon, which is, which is uh, like this, two tetrahedral carbons attached to each other then what happens? Then there is free rotation about this carbon carbon bond and as they rotate you have different geometries of the same molecule and all these geometries are what are called conformations. So, the definition of conformations is that the infinite number of or innumerable number of geometrical arrangements that you see in a molecule when you have free rotation about bonds like carbon carbon bonds okay not in a diatomic molecule diatomic molecule by rotation you don't have uh, but we are only concentrating mostly on the carbon system so we'll think of carbon which are tetrahedral in nature and then they are connected by uh, cc so conformation really starts from ethane not from methane, because methane does not have a carbon carbon bond. So, it really starts with, with ethane, because with methane even if you rotate this high, uh, this bond, it does not uh, it does not create this bond if you rotate it does not create any new geometric arrangement. So, it starts from the ethane system ethane. Last time I, I told you about uh, about the conformations of ethane, I think I started that concept, but again let us just have a repeat the different arrangements of the atoms in space that result from rotations of groups about a single bond, about single bonds are called conformations of the molecule. I just added one or a caution that these single bonds cannot be between atoms which are monovalent, these single bonds should be uh, between atoms which are at least divalent like hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide also will have different oxygen is a divalent atom 
it has got different conformations. Now, out of these conformations, some of the conformations may be more stable than the other, we will discuss that. And uh, what are conformation analysis? This is again a, a, a subtopic of stereochemistry, where we analyze the changes in energy as we do this rotation, say around carbon carbon bond, as we will rotate the bond, what happens to the energy of the system, whether it increase, increases or it decreases or it increases then decreases. So, lot of possibilities are there. Okay. So, that analysis of change of energy with change of uh, now rotation has to be measured by angle. So, it is an angle in case of this type of system, it is the dihedral angle or the torsional angle, where, uh, where it is that it is the angle between the planes. I will show you in a in a, in the slide that what actually we are talking about. Uh, this is this is what we are talking about. That means here we are talking about the angle, but this angle is basically see this is the bond, and then this is another bond. So basically three atoms one, two, three this makes one plane that is given this, that is shown by the blue surface and this bond and the same carbon carbon bond and so these three atoms they also form a plane and that is this pink surface okay so there are two now there are two planes one is this blue another is the red and that the angle between these two planes is what is called the dihedral angle or the torsional angle and as you rotate the carbon here this is a this is the source representation of a of 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 a of a all carbon system and as you rotate it then this dihedral angle is going to change so dihedral angle earlier the dihedral angle was this and now as you rotate the dihedral angle is going to change okay so we measure uh, we do the confirmation analysis by analyzing the change in energy as we change the as we do the rotation and consequently basically what we are doing we are changing the dihedral angle in the system okay and that is what is called confirmation analysis so that was a simple definition now confirmation analysis also means that it deals with the analysis of reactivity of various conformers so confirmation analysis not only says about the about the energy variation with the hydral angle, but it also deals with the reactivity of various geometries that you get by rotation and the reactivity may also be different okay. that is also called conformation analysis. So, it is not only energy it is a so the function energy as a function of the hydral angle and the reactivity as a function of the hydral angle. So, all these group together are what are called uh, confirmation analysis. Okay. Here are some examples that what is the difference between conformation and configuration. Configuration again I repeat is the is the is the is the arrangement in space, but here to change from one configuration to the other is difficult. Like you see this is what is called a cis double bond the two methyls are in the cis direction this is not exactly methyl these two carbons are in the cis direction and these also these two are also cis that means this diene is cis cis diene okay now this is the configuration this cis is a configuration of the system and you have to have drawn another one where this is trans because this carbon and this carbon carbon bond are trans this carbon and this carbon carbon bond are trans. So, this is trans trans diene. So, now these two the relationship between these two are configurational isomers, they have different configurations around the double bond. Okay. On the other hand, if you take this, this is the trans trans double bond and do a rotation about this carbon carbon bond. So, what you end up is this, this is still trans, the configuration still remains trans but the appearance does not look like the same. So, this is a conformation of this molecule obtained by rotation around this carbon. Configuration is the 
arrangement around the double bond. Conformation is the arrangement around single bonds, that is the most important difference. Of course, configuration has another important aspect, not only double bond. If you have a chiral center, then also configuration, configuration can be R or S. If you have a chiral center, this, uh, this can be R or S. And so, suppose I have this molecule and uh, where there are two chiral centers, I rotate this carbon carbon, I rotate this carbon around this carbon carbon bond. So, that the carboxy comes here, carboxy goes back. So, I rotate in this fashion, I rotate that means carboxy I bring to the position of the methyl, methyl goes to the position of the sorry, the carboxy is in the methyl position and the methyl is in the right position. So, here there is a change in. So, here the, bit, the relationship between these two is that you have changed the configuration. By rotation you cannot get to this arrangement. Here is a change in configuration, because if you want to if you want to rotate this, then the carboxy should go here, methyl will come here and hydrogen will go there, but that is not happening here. What you are doing is basically interchanging the position of the carboxy and the methyl and that changes the configuration. So, that means, these two are configurational isomers, these two are configurational isomers. Okay. On the other hand, the same molecule I have written here, CO 2 H, M E and hydrogen. Now, what you do? You have rotated the carboxy, carboxy you have brought here. So, the then the methyl goes there and the hydrogen goes to the position of the methyl. Okay. So, basically this arrangement is obtained by seeing just simple rotation around this carbon carbon bond. So, that means, this is a conformer of this. Of course, the, the bottom one you have to keep intact, do not change that one and that has not been changed. Only th the uh, only change is the, the, the appearance of the system but the absolute configuration here remain the same. Okay. So, this is the conformation one of the conformation of this one. Okay. So, likewise you can draw innumerable infinite number of configurations. Now, there are certain uh, interesting aspect of conformation versus configuration. Configuration is the absolute arrangement of groups in space around a double bond or around a chiral center that is configuration. Conformation is the Arrange related the arrangements that you get by rotation. Okay. Now, in case of uh, going from one conformation to the other conformation, what you do? You just do a rotation, but from one configuration going from one configuration to another configuration, you have to break the bond and then reform the bond. Okay. So, that is that is a big difference that means one configuration cannot easily go to the other configuration, because that needs a breakage of bond. Whereas, in conformation you do not need a breakage of bond, you only need a rotation. That is why it is easy to change from one conformer to the other in most of the cases, but there are some cases where conformations are really very rigid, very difficult to change. Uh, the, the barrier for this rotation may be restricted. The only case where you change the configuration from one to the other, from R to the S is in case of atrop isomerism, where without breaking the bond, you can just rotate one of the phenyl ring. I again tell you the concept of atrop isomerism. Atrop isomerism is that isomerism that takes place in biphenyl systems, okay, restricted rotation and it can exist in R and S forms. We have also con done the R S configurational nomenclature in case of biphenyl. And so, from changing from R to the S compound, what you need, you do not have to break a bond, you just rotate. So, that is where conformations are becoming, are, are equated with configurations, that is the only case that you do not need a, you do not need to break a bond. Okay. So, these are the certain differences between conformations and configurations. Now, we have done the ethane configuration, because I said I conformations, the conformation started with ethane that is a carbon carbon bond, because you need a carbon carbon bond in case of organic compounds to do the conformation analysis. So, if you draw the conformation of ethane, see this is the wedge formula, sometimes called wedge and dash structure. Okay. So, wedge and uh, wedge formula you see 
from this you can say that this hydrogen and uh, and this hydrogen they are opposite they are opposite to each other okay and if you do the sohorst formula this is the same hydrogen which is beta and this is the alpha hydrogen this is this one you see that is what is the uh, that is the sohorst formula of this this form and if you draw the Newman projection formula of this one, see from looking at this C C bond, you can see the Newman projection formula of this. So, this hydrogen goes up that means, this is the front carbon and the back carbon is the is this, this circle that denotes the back carbon. So, this is the Newman projection. Usually, we adopt the Newman projection formula uh, while describing the conformational analysis. Uh, now, this one is the one which is called last time I also told you that this is what is the staggered conformation. This is the staggered conformation where the tidal angle between the between the closest neighbors like this hydrogen uh, the closest neighbor is this hydrogen the tidal angle is 60 degree. Okay. So, the 60 degree tidal angle uh, between this hydrogen or that hydrogen is uh, is a staggered one or the better way of representation of staggered is this one where one this is the three bonds the other three bonds are exactly drawn in the opposite sense that means this ch and this ch are anti to each other this ch and that ch is anti to each other and this ch and that ch are anti to each other the 60 degree tidal angle i was telling is about this angle 60 degree angle that means, the nearest neighbor either this one or that one uh, considering the next carbon not the same carbon the nearest neighbor in the adjacent carbon that is this one or that one that has got a tidal angle of 60 degree. Okay. So, this is the staggered one and this is the if you rotate it by 60 degree if you go to the Newman projection. So, I bring the I take the back carbon and rotate this one in anti clockwise. So, this hydrogen comes here and they are eclipsing to each other, this hydrogen will go here, they are eclipsing to this bond and this hydrogen will eclipse the this uh, CH bond. So, you get the eclipsed conformation, this is for ethane. Okay. Now, if you draw the if you try to do the conformation analysis, the tidal angle I have already explained uh, that is also called torsional angle that also I told you. So, if you now do the energy variation of this of the of the system of the various conformations as a function of torsional angle. So, what you have suppose I have started with the eclipsed one, the eclipsed one has the highest energy fully eclipsed one that means, when these are fully eclipsed the diadal angle is 0. Okay. So, that is the full eclipse form that is that has got the highest energy. Okay. We will come back to that what is the reason for this having the highest energy okay. uh, that will come later, but right now you assume that that is the highest energy okay. and then as you as you rotate start rotating this suppose the back carbon. So, you what you end up will be a staggered form and the staggered form will have a lower energy than the eclipse form. Now, let us see why the eclipse form has higher energy. The reason may be there are two case two things that can be considered. One is there is a hydrogen atom here. Suppose, this is hydrogen this green ball is a hydrogen and this green the other green ball is another hydrogen. Now, although it is shown very small, but actually these are much bigger spheres. So, one thing that can happen is that whether they are hitting each other or not. Okay. So, that is what is called the steric repulsion or the, the van der Waals repulsion. So, what was actually found that in case of hydrogen this repulsion is not very much because the, the radius of the hydrogens are such that this repulsion constitutes only 10 percent of the instability uh, that is associated with an eclipse form. So, van der Waals interaction the repulsive interaction is contributing only only about 10 percent. So, what is the other 
repulsive forces that is destabilizing the eclipse form. The other is basically this, this is consisting of electrons, this bond and this bond is also consisting of electrons. Now, there will be repulsion between these two bonds. So, they are called bond opposition strain that is also a repulsive interaction. Okay. So, that uh, so, what I said the hydrogen atoms are too small to get to each other's way. So, steric factors make around 10 percent of the rotational about rotational period. That means, it constitutes it adds about 10 percent of the energy that the eclipse form has 10 percent of the excess energy that the, the eclipse form has over the staggered form. Okay. The difference in energy is about about 3 kilo calorie it is written 2.9 different books have different values. I think you can roughly say that the difference in energy is around 3 kilo calorie per mole. Uh, so, one is the steric factor as I said, but that does not con contribute much that is only 10 percent. The other is these orbitals repel each other means these electrons basically you are saying that these orbitals are made up of electrons. So, they repel each other. Okay. So, that is the bond opposition strain or the electron electron repulsion electron pair electron pair repulsion. There is a third concept that is also associated with it and that is uh, that is the that is not considering the eclipse form that you consider the staggered form. So, this is the eclipse form where the hydrogens this is beta that is beta that means adjacent hydrogens are eclipsing, eclipsing each other. Here, I have written the staggered form. This is the hydrogen, and the anti-hydrogen is this one. Okay, so that means this is this is the staggered form. On this side, this is beta. On this side, you have the alpha hydrogen. That means this is the staggered form. Okay, so the way to to know whether this is staggered or eclipsed, uh, you better take the hydrogens which are in plane. I think that is a better concept. You take the two hydrogens in the plane, and you see they are in the same direction. So that means this is an eclipse form and this is the staggered form, because you take the two hydrogens which are in the plane and they are added to each other. So, that is the staggered form. Now, interestingly what is being said here that every bond formation when there are orbitals combine with each other to form a bond, there is an anti bonding scenario also. An anti bonding, bo uh, anti -bonding uh, molecular orbital is also formed, where the, the, the the lobe of the orbital is more in the back side okay. like here. So, you see the this is a C H bond and this is the anti bonding scenario. What is anti bonding scenario? When the hydrogen uh, actually this should be written in, in sphere this is not should not be in the because hydrogen does not have actually it was a sphere, but because of the opposite phases of the of this side of the p orbital and the s orbital. So, there will be a kind of a repulsion kind of a repulsion and you see the the lobe the anti bonding orbital has a bigger lobe on the back side now. If it is bonding then the whole thing will have a electron cloud surrounding this carbon and the hydrogen. If it is anti bonding then there will be a bigger lobe on the back side. So, this is what is called the sigma star we are considering the sigma star and this sigma star will be empty because in a carbon hydrogen when they are forming a bond you have two electrons and both will go to the most stable the outbound principle will be applicable. So, both the electrons will occupy the ground that but that means the sigma orbital the sigma star orbital which has got a bigger lobe on this side. So, now that is almost uh, that is aligned to the C H sigma bond on this side. So, now what happens these two can again interact with each other. So, electron can flow from this from this orbital into this empty sigma star. The other way you can say that there is a stabilizing interaction between the sigma C H and the sigma star of the C H which is in the anti direction okay. and that stabilizes the staggered form. So, what we have learned? that in the eclipse form there is some kind very little steric interaction when there is hydrogens they are eclipsing each other because hydrogen is small 
but it still contributes about 10 percent. The other factor that contributes to the destabilization of the Euclid form is the bond opposition strain. That means, the orbitals or the electrons they are repelling each other, because they are basically negative charges they are falling on top of each other. And the factor which stabilizes the staggered form is this sigma c h donating to the sigma star c h of the anti c h in the adjacent carbon. Okay. So, all these three probably now it is uh, there is a uh, acceptance of the whole picture is that the real picture is probably a mixture of all three effects. So, you cannot say that for one reason this is unstable than the other. Okay. The energy barrier comes from all these three effects and that total combined that becomes about 3 kilocalorie per mole. Okay. Uh, so, that is the case of ethane. Now, in case of butane you have an extra you have two extra methyls now. So, a butane in case of ethane you have you have only one energy minima and one energy maxima that is in case of ethane. So, it first it is eclipsed and then it goes to the stagger. Uh, so, it goes to the staggered then again eclipsed then again staggered. So, this way it goes. So, the energy because these bonds these atoms are all same. So, energy only uh, the energy minima remains at the same position we can go back a little bit and then again check the conformation analysis here. So, this this is the eclipse form this is the eclipse form this is the eclipse form they have the same energy because all atoms are same and this is the anti form uh, the staggered form here it is staggered form the staggered form and the staggered form they have the same energy because the atoms are same this is ethane. Okay. When you change the hydrogen this hydrogen to methyl and another hydrogen to methyl the situation changes the energy profile diagram changes okay so, and then the you have more you have more number of uh, conformations where you can identify the name you will see that the staggered form can can be of two types okay depending on the dihedral angle between the methyls the carbon methyl groups okay now just one more concept which i didn't uh, tell you at that time last lecture i mentioned this that amongst these various conformations some conformations will be there which will occupy the minimum of the energy profile diagram. So, the conformations which occupy the minimum of the energy profile diagram it is written here staggered conformation is lower in energy that I have said it is the only conformer in ethane it is the only conformer in ethane as it occupies a minima in the energy profile diagram. That means, this conformation which has got which lies in the energy minima is what is known as conformer. So, conformers are conformations which lie in the energy minima during your conformation analysis. That means, when you plot the energy versus dihedral angle or torsional angle only the minima the the conformation that is lying in the minima that is called the conformer. So, in ethane there is only one conformer and that is the staggered conformer of ethane all others are not. One interesting point to note here is that every point in this energy profile diagram represents a conformation of ethane. Suppose I take a point here. So, this point uh, this point has lower energy than lower energy than the eclipsed form definitely the energy profile diagram says that. It, but it is not a conformer. The conformer is the only one which occupies the lowest position, the minima. Uh, this concept is very important. There is, if you want to isolate, if you want to check by different spectroscopic means that what is the percentage of of uh, this staggered conformer in ethane, you will see it is more than 99.99 percent. Okay. So, basically virtually it is the only form that is present at a particular time. Although there is free relation different uh, different eclipse forms are uh, different staggered forms are generating, but 
there is no difference between these staggered forms because all are hydrogens. Okay. But the situation will change again I will repeat the situation will change when we put two methyls at the two carbons that means butane and the next half an hour we will consider the butane conformation. Okay. Thank you.